Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for July the 5th, 2015. We begin a new unit today uh, from our quarterly unit 2 uh, entitled Micah Calls for Justice Among Unjust People. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is You've Got to Change Your Evil Ways. Devotion reading is taken from Proverbs chapter 11, uh, verses 1 through 10. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 2. And we'll be in the second chapter today in our print passage, uh, verses 4 through 11. Our key verse reads... Should it be said, O house of Jacob, is the spirit of the Lord angry? Does he do such things? Do not my words do good to him whose ways are upright? That's taken from Micah, the second chapter, uh, verses 7. That is the uh, NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore Michael's depiction of people who deny their wrongdoing in the community. Number two, express feelings about people who attempt to justify the evil and harm they commit. And number three, respond with appropriate opposition to those engaged in wrongdoing in the community. We have three outlines today taken Uh, from our adult quarterly. The first one is entitled, The Tables Are Turned. The second one is entitled, Be Quiet. And the third outline is entitled, God Speaks for Himself. And so we thank and praise God again for the privilege and certainly such a gracious opportunity for us to be able to share a word with you from our Sunday school. One that is Uh, much needed uh, in our culture and in our time today. Uh, Last few weeks, last few Sundays, we've been studying from the book of Amos, uh, uh, one of the uh, 12 minor prophets. Today we uh, have another minor prophet uh, from the book of Micah. I don't know if you have had opportunity to read his book. He is the author um, that is identified by his hometown of Moresheth. Uh, You can see that in the first chapter of Micah, verse 1 and then verse 14, implying that he was an outsider uh, to Jerusalem. He uh, was prophesying in the same period with Isaiah, and he helped shape Israel's character and policies. Micah's inspired preaching Uh, against injustice uh, eventually brought Hezekiah to repentance and so saved Jerusalem. Um, The date and occasion for uh, Micah's uh, prophecies are as follows. He preached during the reigns of Jotham, um, Ahaz, and King Hezekiah. It was a time of Assyrian expansion and dominance in the ancient Near East. The northern kingdom of Israel was gradually overrun by the Assyrians, with the capital of Samaria finally falling um, in 722 B.C. Uh, Within Israel and Judah during this time, uh, shocking contrast between the extremely rich and the oppressed poor developed due to due to the exploitation of Israel's middle class. You can see that in the second chapter, verse 8 and verse 9, by greedy landowners, uh, chapter 2 of Micah, verses 1 through 5, the oppressors were supported by Israel's corrupt political and religious leaders. That's in chapter 3 of the book of Micah. And because of this failed leadership, the whole nation became morally corrupt and ripe for judgment. So if you recall, as we studied in the book of Amos, uh, the Lord prophesied through that prophet at the time uh, to uh, the surrounding nations, 
uh, Gentile nations, if you will, uh, then to uh, the northern kingdom uh, of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, respectively. Uh, and God had some impressive things to say about them and their dealings with uh, oppressing the poor. Uh, during Amos' time, if you recall, that Israel was enjoying uh, great prosperity. Uh, they were taking advantage uh, of the poor, dishonest uh, business practices. Uh, their courts uh, were compromised, their justice system. Uh, God was dealing with uh, with them at that time through Amos about the absence of justice. Today, God is using uh, uh, this prophet Micah uh, to deal with Israel and Judah about their practices, which uh, for the most part are the same. Uh, they just have not changed. Uh, we said that uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, God has not changed. We understand that, or we should. And man hasn't changed. We're still rebelling against God. Sadly enough, these are God's people um, that he rescued, brought out of Egyptian bondage, uh, took them for his own. Uh, and they've come to a place in history, as we are going to see in this lesson, that uh, uh, they are not listening to God any, any longer. Uh, they don't want to change, and they don't want to hear from God's preachers, God's prophets. But the topic says you've got to change your evil ways. Uh, and I wanted to share uh, what evil is. I don't know if we understand it um, from God's perspective. Uh, but the word, the term evil, is that which is opposed to God and his purposes, or that which uh, defined from human perspective is harmful and unproductive. Um, this is what uh, evil is, um, and it's important for us to study the Word of God so we will know how to be able to uh, understand it, to discern it, uh, and hopefully to um, remove it from our midst. It should be noted that Micah's name uh, in Hebrew means, Who is like the Lord? So we're going to begin with these few verses today if hopefully we can shed some light uh, on what God is uh, addressing here and some of the uh, indictments if you will that God has uh, charged that his people are guilty of um, and they have failed to to repent uh, as we studied in the book of Amos uh, and so now as we move into this prophecy uh, from the prophet Micah, we, get, we begin in the second chapter. Uh, our outline today begins at the fourth verse. But I, I wanted to share uh, this prophecy from the second chapter of Micah. It has three parts. Uh, number one, there is the accusation uh, made by God through the prophet Micah, evil and violent men unethically seized sacred property and destroy its owners. Um, the sentence, the Lord sentences them to exile and the loss of their land to invaders. Uh, verse 4, where we begin today, is the conclusion. The robbers are cut off from the covenant people. The accusation and sentence are linked uh, by a play on words involving who devise iniquity and I am devising disaster uh, which are virtually identical expressions in Hebrew so as the powerful took fields away from Israel's men um, that's in verse 1 and 2 of the second chapter of Micah so the Lord will send an enemy to wrest the promised land from them. That's in verses 4 and 5 as we will uh, share those with you today. So let's pick this up at Micah chapter 2 uh, beginning at verse 4 and verse 5. Keep in mind again this is the conclusion uh, and I want to be 
uh, begin reading uh, this from the NIV translation. In that day, men will ridicule you. They will taunt you with this mournful song. We are utterly ruined. My people's possession is divided up. He takes it from me. He assigns our fields to traitors. Therefore, you will have no one in the assembly of the Lord to divide the land by lot. So as we get into this, uh, these verses here, uh, particularly in the uh, fourth verse, when the Lord says, In that day, uh, that day of judgment, uh, that day uh, that has uh, been prophesied that would come as a result of uh, God's people's disobedience. Uh, so here, here in the fifth verse, after the Babylonian exile, the land would be redistributed. Uh, I want you to look at Numbers chapter uh, 26, verse 55, and Joshua chapter uh, 18, verses 8, uh, 8, 8 through 10. But neither the oppressors nor the descendants uh, then be present to claim uh, an inheritance. So here we saw in Amos' writings... Uh, Micah alluded to God's coming judgment as that day, meaning the day of the Lord's judgment. In contrast to the time of Micah's writing, people will ridicule the rich landowners. Their disastrous plight would be the subject of parables set to music. The rich would face complete ruin. The land that had been there for hundreds of years would be taken away by foreign invaders. This prophecy was fulfilled in the post-exilic times of Ezra and Nehemiah. The northern kingdom of Israel ceased to exist as a dis distinct people after their exile. The Assyrians forced intermarriage upon them, so you will have no one in the assembly of the Lord to divide the land by lot. If we recall the story, the prophecy, the Lord raised up the Assyrians uh, to come in and besiege the city uh, of Samaria to take Israel captive uh, for her sin. And so uh, why did this happen? Uh, the evil practices, um, as we understand Israel and we understand Judah, their practices, uh, and God spoke heavily uh, against them uh, because of their actions against the poor. Uh, uh, we had a beautiful illustration given in the book of Amos uh, on how they uh, really oppressed. Uh, they caused men to go into slavery. They took advantage of their weaker brothers and sisters. They took advantage uh, 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 of their fellow man and God uh, uh, as he tells us you know in his word that we ought to love one another that we ought to treat one another in a way uh, that he might be pleased and when we take advantage of one another uh, through dishonest means and we cause uh, one another discomfort uh, that we might get rich and that we might feed off of one another God is not pleased so there is enough history here uh, to help us understand that God was not pleased with their conduct and had sent them a word uh, through various prophets to change, to repent. But you know, uh, uh, as we learned about Israel and uh, how they uh, had prospered, they felt like their security uh, was their defense, uh, their money. Uh, their wealth was a defense against God's judgment. So we're going to see in this lesson today, and sometimes as these uh, 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 prophecies come, and uh, Amos, uh, we studied him, uh, was just a regular ordinary citizen, uh, uh, and God raised him up, uh, and so it is with uh, Micah. Uh, these men were called by God to uh, prophesy, uh, judgment, warnings, if you will, uh, for the upon the people of God to change their behavior, 
uh, and they fail to do so. So we want to keep in mind that God is monitoring all of our activities. He knows when we are dishonest with one another, when we are cheating one another. Uh, and if you go back uh, and read these stories about uh, Israel and how they just uh, took advantage of their fellow brothers and sisters and God was not pleased. So here, as we get into the second outline about be quiet, this is taken from Micah the second chapter, uh, verses 6 through 7a, again from the uh, uh, NIV translation, do not prophesy, their prophets say, do not prophesy about these things, disgrace will not overtake us. Should it be said, O house of Jacob, is the Spirit of the Lord angry? Does he do such things? So as we look at this outline, Micah begins to defend his message uh, as some wanted him to be quiet. Shut up. We don't need you to talk about this uh, uh, judgment. And, uh, and so here, Micah had shared some very harsh words in in verses 1 through 5. The greedy, rich landowners did not want to hear such strong condemnations against their actions. Micah then began to share their reactions to his prophecies. Their prophets told Micah not to prophesy such things. They did not want to hear the ugly truth. They would rather have heard a pretty lie. In reality, they were telling God to be quiet. They were chastising God for chastising them. In fact, God was using such severe language to literally scare straight his chosen people. So when we look back at the book of Amos, he faced the same cause to be silent. I want you to look at Amos chapter 5 verse 10 and Amos chapter 7 verses 10 uh, through 13. Unfortunately, this group of people was self-assured. They did not think anything bad would happen to them. No doubt they had confidence in their wealth. They would get the best justice that money could buy. They had plenty of money to buy plenty of justice. Micah then shared their further rhetorical response in verse 7. They were upset with Micah for even sharing such words of doom and gloom against such the descendants of Jacob. Relying on God's past protection of his chosen people, these rich landowners just did not believe that God would be angry with them and become impatient. They fully expected God to always be on their side, no matter how they live. God uh, just would not be impatient with their behavior. So, as Micah prophesied, there were other prophets who uh, were discouraging or trying to discourage him in the fact that they didn't want to hear the words that he had to say. Uh, that surely because God had uh, allowed them to obtain wealth that there was no way that God could be angry with them. With them. So they just wanted Micah to be quiet. And, you know, that that's kind of how we are. That is how we are today. We don't want to hear... Uh, warnings of uh, uh, against our uh, 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 evil practices. We don't want anybody to preach about these things, and and we're living in that time now. We don't want to hear uh, uh, about the judgments of God. We want to continue to do as we feel we are able to do, and then uh, uh, whatever security we have, maybe it's in our wealth or uh, good health or in, in other means. Uh, that we are somehow protected from the word of God. But uh, I, I said earlier, God has not changed. And so when we are warned by God, we need to take, his, uh, take him at his word. So God had been promising the children of Israel and the children of Judah that he was not pleased with their actions and, and that he would punish them thoroughly uh, for their sin. So they didn't believe the word that came to them. So they wanted Micah and then uh, even as we looked at Amos, they wanted these two men uh, to be quiet. So they wanted to, to, to uh, continue to oppress the poor uh, 
and they wanted to continue to wallow in their sin and, and believe somehow that they were safe. You know, sometimes blessings can be a snare uh, for us. Uh, it's a good thing to be blessed by God, but it certainly is not a license to sin. Uh, and it's certainly as we are in the dispensation of grace, uh, God is not giving grace uh, as a license for sin. If we look at Romans chapter 6, we'll be able to see that. And so we don't want to be guilty of taking uh, God for granted and what he has done. So they had confidence in what they had in their material things. Uh, things that they didn't bring into the world and things that they didn't take out of the world. And so it is for us today. We don't take anything out of this world. We leave it here. So our confidence needs to be in the Lord and, and in his word. So uh, it, it asks a question here considering uh, how the false prophets of Micah's day tried to silence him. Is there evidence that such cause for silence exists today? Absolutely. Uh, and as we are watching the news and, and hearing the reports and, and, and we're watching uh, our conduct and, and we're getting and straying away from God's word and the arrogance of mankind, they don't even want to be told about it. Uh, we can't preach about certain things. We can't say anything about these behaviors because uh, 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 it's against the norm, it's against the law, it's against the tradition, it's against uh, uh, our attitudes that we have, and we just don't want to hear that. But God's word will not change. God always has someone that he will raise up. If you look at the history of these men, Amos worked out in the field, uh, uh, tended the sycamore trees, and uh, uh, worked with uh, uh, animals and that type of thing. Uh, but God called him out of the field and, and equipped him. Uh, uh, God called Micah and equipped him. And so these men had to have a lot of courage. Uh, and we have to have courage today as ministers and stand in the gap and cry loud and spread not and, and make known God's ways to his people and uh, regardless to whether you believe it or not, or you hear it or not, it won't change. And we have to continue to preach the word of God uh, to this evil and perverse generation and warn them uh, that God will come in. God will step in. Don't ever feel like your word is the last word or is the final say. God has the final say. And Israel uh, just would not change their ways. Uh, and can you imagine they were chastening uh, uh, Micah for what he was saying because he was uh, 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 really bold in his language uh, uh, and his message toward uh, their sins. So here in the second chapter of, of Micah verses 7b through 11, God speaks for himself. Isn't that beautiful to know? We are just messengers, uh, representatives, but God is God. God vindicates God. God will vindicate his holy name, his righteous name. He will uphold the standard, uh, uh, whether we are here or not, to see it. And so we need to be mindful today that uh, we serve an a, a awesome God. He is sovereign above everything, above everyone, above all the laws that we make in this land. God sits high and he looks low. So here uh, we begin from the NIV translation. Again, this is Micah chapter 2, verses 7b through 11. Do not my words do good to him whose ways are upright? Lately my people have risen up like an enemy. You strip off the rich, from those, the rich robe from those who pass by without care like men returning from battle. You drive the women of my people from their pleasant homes. You take away the blessing from their children forever. Verse 10, get up, go away, for this is not your resting place. Because it is defiled, it is ruined beyond all remedy. How we treat one another. Look at how Israel was treating uh, their fellow brothers and sisters. 
Verse 11 says, If a liar and deceiver comes and says, I will prophesy for you plenty of wine and beer, he would be just a prophet for this people. Isn't that something? We would rather hear a lie than the truth. Uh, Paul said that to Timothy, that there will come a time when uh, that, that we'll come up with teachers uh, uh, that, that, that will tickle our ears and tell us what we want to hear and, and please us that we may smile with them you know these are the types of folks we draw into our circles sometimes to 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 pat us on the back even when we know we are doing the wrong thing uh and we are doing the wrong thing to our brothers and sisters we are, get people to agree with us uh, uh to condone our wrongdoing and, and that's the attitude that israel had here uh, uh in these verses here but god was speaking for himself uh, in verses 7b through 13, God responded for himself. The reason why the rich landowners wanted Micah to be silent was simple. They were guilty of what Micah was preaching. They did not want to hear the truth. That is why God responded forcefully. Do not my words do good to him whose ways are upright? In other words, the rich had 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 been living as God had commanded, uh, uh, then they would not have had a problem with Micah's prophecies. God was not finished. He let them know that they were the real enemies. They had taken advantage of the poor time and time again. This was not something from their past. It was happening right at that time. As the verse 8 says, lately. What what were they still doing? They stole the clothes off of the backs of others, just like soldiers who took spoils from the defenseless. They used devious business practice to take property from women, a reference to widows, so that no inheritance remained for then orphaned children. God's patience was at an end. He wanted them to get up and go away. Their evil, ruinous actions had ruined and polluted the land. Now the land would reject them. They were unfit to be called residents of the land. This is pretty pretty strong language here that God is using uh, to define the character uh, uh, of his people and the attitudes. Uh, but I want to give you a couple of scriptures that I want you to look at uh, concerning this inheritance here. A family's property was a permanent sacred trust from God. Leviticus chapter 25 verses 10 through 13. And also I want you to look at Numbers uh, uh, chapter 27 uh, verse 1 through 11. So here as we go into this outline here. Now the land would reject them. They were unfit. That is why God's punishment God's punishment involved the removal of his chosen people from the land. It needed a time of rest from their evil deeds. Yet God knew that they did not want to hear the truth. Sadly, his chosen people. Now, I want you to get that. His chosen people would rather pay top dollar to hear prophecies, such as the phrase of plenty of wine and beer, uh, from a false prophet rather than hear the truth for free. Isn't that something? God's people. Those of us that say we belong to God. That we are his chosen people. We are completely responsible for obeying God. Uh, God gave his children. His people. He gave them the Canaanite land. They all had a portion of land. God distributed among them as he chose. And they took advantage and exploited the grace of God, the mercies of God. And they got confident in themselves, in the, in, in the things that they had, that God had given to them. And they turned their backs on God. And they stiffened their necks against him. Do we see any of that today? Are we stiffening our necks against the, the word of God? Are we becoming uh, 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 the arrogant people of God? Uh, uh, are we calling ourselves Christians and, 
and we're going to exploit God's grace and his mercy. And, and, and we can just see uh, the direction that we're going in. We're going in the wrong direction. And God is sending us a word to correct it. Listen, this word is for us today. I know we're talking about Israel. And I know we're talking about Judah in the 7th century. Uh, and, I, and I know that uh, 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 we can't see here. And sometimes we can't connect the dots on how this applies to us. But it does to apply to us. We uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, have the capacity to treat one another in a way that is pre uh, uh, pleasing to God. So these people of God uh, would rather uh, uh, get a prophet. Uh, and it says here, a false prophet. Somebody that uh, is, uh, is preaching contrary to the word of God. False prophets who take the word of God and twist it. Uh, for their own good. They'll take a verse from one uh, uh, passage. And they'll pit it against another scripture. And we hear this type of thing every day. Uh, so we can give ourselves license to disobey God. We want to give ourselves license to sin. We want to give ourselves a, a, a pat on the back. That we are able now to carry this thing. And to do it uh, uh, by ourselves. But. But one of these days, God is going to demonstrate to us. And it's sad that these people, Israel, they watched God. Uh, if not them, they certainly had word from their descendants of how God rescued them and brought them out with a mighty and an outstretched arm. How he uh, didn't allow any diseases to come on up on them that he uh, allowed to come up on the Egyptians. How he uh, uh, caused their enemy uh, to die right before their very eyes. You know the death angel went down in Egypt land. And, and God told them to put blood on their doorposts. And the death angel would pass by them. You know God is just. It's just so many different testimonies that we have today. Uh, how God blessed us and kept us and spared us. And, and he have time and time again showed us his power and his strength. And now we don't want to do what he says but I tell you what there's a change coming uh, just like Micah and Amos prophesied in that day and, and it, it served notice on Israel and Judah there's going to come a day of change God is going to bring a day when he's going to raise up an enemy uh, uh, the Assyrians and then the Babylonians uh, and, and he these Nations, these armies, they took uh, 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 God's people captive and held them there. You know, and so we have to be careful and mindful that God has a remedy. If we're going to be uh, arrogant toward God, trust me, he has a plan in store uh, for that attitude. Here the question is asked in the quarterly. Think about one unjust situation in your community. What are some ways that you could address the situation? And what are the risks of acting and of failing to act? We can no longer fail to sit on the sideline and be quiet. Uh, as it was said here to Micah about what the Lord has said. Uh, I always treat, uh, as I get ready to close, I always treat preaching the word of God. Uh, as a very simple matter in the fact that it's not my word. All I have to do is tell you what thus says the Lord. Uh, and I believe I can do that uh, without any misgivings. I'm going to tell you what thus says the Lord. I'm going to tell you that this is contrary to what the Lord would have us to do. We serve a holy God. We serve a righteous God. We serve a mighty God. And we ought to live, all of us, we ought to live in accordance with that description of God's character. And so here, if we fail uh, uh, to tell God's people what he has commanded us to tell them, then even in the third chapter, I believe, of the book of Ezekiel helps us to understand that they will st still be judged for their actions, but God will hold his preachers accountable uh, for their blood so we have to be careful and I'm so thankful today I hope that uh, we will go back and read the book of Amos and as we began our lessons 
we will have quite a few in this new unit too. We will be in the book of Micah and we will be studying uh, how God was dealing with his people concerning their attitudes and how they were treating the poor, taking advantage uh, of the needy uh, because they could, because they had the authority to. Their courts uh, were compromised. Uh, uh, it didn't work for the poor like it worked for the rich. Uh, and we see all of these things going on today, but God is 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 mindful. He knows where we are. He knows what we're doing. So I thank and praise God for these few verses that we've had opportunity to share. And we hope that you will go back and read the background scripture and begin your survey in the book of Micah. I want to close with this prayer that is offered in our quarterly. Merciful God, we know that we sometimes stop up our ears to your words. Keep us humble enough to always listen. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So again until such time. That the Lord will permit me to share another word with you. We say God bless you.